All right, next question. Next question is Rx. So we're talking about Rx, the prescription of workouts, not medicine. So Rx inside of the gym, what is it? Um, does it matter? Why does it matter? Uh, we have a note here that says, how has your thinking evolved on this topic yep. over the last, how long you've been doing, we'll call it group, fit, group functional fitness? Um, so I've been dabbling in this since about 2007, so let's say 13 years. So I've had a, a lot of time in the saddle with this. And so first we'll just start with the easy piece is Rx stands for prescription, and it was actually stolen from the medical community because they write shorthand Rx because they say, okay, I, I, I come in, I present with this issue to my, my medical professional, and they write you a prescription. But instead of writing out prescription every time, they shorthanded it to Rx. And so what happened is that that just got adopted by those in functional fitness and CrossFit in particular, right? So um, that's what RX is. And the way that we, you know, have historically used it in here is, is a couple of different, excuse me, a couple of different avenues. The first one, uh, the one that is most familiar to people that come in and go through our free intros is a client sits a potential member sits in this seat and has a conversation with you, Steph, Emily, Lydia, whoever it is in that position, and they talk about goals that they have, things that they're doing now, and you present to them with a present them with a plan on how to get there. And that becomes essentially their prescription. So you are prescribing to them, hey, you're going to do these things, you're gonna to come to group fitness three days a week, you're gonna work with Coach Steph on your nutrition, all in um the interest of getting you to the goal that you have. So right. that's prescription piece number two. The other way, and specifically what this is kind of referring to is Rx when it comes to the workout. So today, for instance, the workout of the day for our group fitness class was written as four time. You're gonna do 125 double unders, 21 overhead squats, uh, the prescribed weight for guys was 95, for females was 65, 100 double unders, 15 overhead squats, 75 double unders, 9 overhead squats, and oh by the way, we're going to put you under the pressure and say you got to finish that in 8 minutes. Right. So if you quote unquote did this workout as prescribed or as Rx, that would mean that you did it just as it was written. And historically that is always how we have done things. And I don't know that I've ever actually talked to you about this, but that's why I kind of put the note on it. How my thinking has evolved on this topic has probably been exponentially accelerated through COVID. So when we were at home and you and Steph and Emily were prescribing workouts to us and you were customizing them to every single person, I, and you may have actually said this to me, it was interesting because every day it was, it was like, man, I'm, I'm doing exactly what the coach told me to do. I'm RXing my workout. Right. Right? And so I had a, honestly, a difficult time when we came back into the gym and there would be days where things would be programmed that as they were written on the whiteboard, people couldn't quote unquote click the RX button because they didn't do it exactly as it was written on the whiteboard. And you know, there's a lot of stuff like psychologically that goes on, I've seen it for years and it's just kind of bugged me under the skin but it, it finally started to click for me a couple weeks back that like, wait a minute, like really nobody in class, say for just a couple of people are doing those workouts as they are written every single day. What they are doing is what you or whatever coach is coaching the class is telling them to do. So I'll give you a great for instance today. Today, uh, I have a big hole in my left hand from doing all those pull-ups on Monday, and you and I talked about it when I came in, and I said, hey, I cannot overhead squat today. And you said, great, what about a thruster? Can you do that? I gripped the bar, tried it, nope, I can't do that either because the bar was like eating right into my hand as I was doing that. And you're like, okay, well, what about front squat? Can you do that? Put the bar on the front rack, great, no problem. Okay, cool. So for you, your workout today 
you're going to front squat for the, the heavy triple that we're doing as kind of a strength and warm up piece. And then in the workout, instead of overhead squat, you're going to front squat. So what did you just do for me? Coach, set your workout up. Which is? your prescription. Yes. So you <laughs> gave me a prescription. So guess what? And, you know, people can comment and we can go back and forth on this, but when I log my workout into Wattify today, I'm clicking RX because it's based around what my coach told me to do, not what some silly text told me to do. So going forward, and I can kind of make this, um, I kind of have the power to make this proclamation, uh -huh. if you will. If you're doing the workout as your coach is telling you to do it, guess what? You are doing the workout as RX. Done. Like, final. Boom. Now. We're set forth in stone. <laughs> What do you, do you have any comments, concerns, questions about that? Do you want to go back and forth on that? Yeah, so my, my question is really is how, how do we, and we, we can have this, this is probably a conversation we wouldn't normally have on the podcast, but yeah. how, how do we as coaches present that when we are, say, briefing a workout? So like for today, like, and so I'm going to go on a rant, I'm going to ramble for a second. When we, not Rambo. Not Sylvester Stallone. But. Whoa. <laughs> fired up. Random bowl. When we came back from COVID, I introduced something called a weight cap. And so yes. the idea behind a weight cap was, okay, you could not go any heavier than this weight. And it kind of served to be um, analogous with RX in that, okay, because you can't go, like, so for today, it's 95-65 with the workout you mentioned. Because you can't go heavier than 95, 65, we know that weight's supposed to feel like. But the weight cap was there to let people know that, okay, we were just out of the gym for two, two and a half months. Right. Don't feel like you have to come back and do 45 overhead squats at 95. Like, your weight cap today is that you might be doing them at, like, we have people today doing them at 45 pounds, like empty barbell in the class this morning. And the idea behind that was so, when, people, when we came back from being on quarantine, that even if they didn't do that max weight or the weight cap, they could click on this. So that was the idea behind it. People can read between the lines and see that it's very similar to RX. So even if they didn't do 95 or 65 today, they won't click that RX button because they don't feel like they did. But like you said, I'm making it known that when there's a weight cap, there's no necessary RX in terms of weight. With movements, maybe like we had double unders today and stuff. You took it a step further and said, hey, even if you're not doing double unders, if you're doing a workout that a coach gave you, like if you showed up and did this workout and did something that was programmed for you, like that's your RX, that's your yes. prescription. So exactly. that, and just changing the mentality behind it a little bit. So I like it. Um, my question to you is, we started with a weight cap. How do we present it now when it comes to briefing how weight should feel. So we should we always call it a weight cap? Should we stop calling it an RX? Should we so like yesterday was a 50 pound dumbbells for men, 35 for women. Yeah. We know that for the movements we were doing that's gonna feel rather heavy. Should we just always present things as weight caps from here on out? Or another word for it? Or Yeah, so that's a really great question. I honestly don't think that it matters more than the individual one-on-one -on -one coach to member interaction that happens to say, hey, this is what it is that we programmed, so here's what I want you to do. And, and I'll, I'll give you a great example because I did think about that yesterday. Yesterday definitely skewed more towards the endurance side of things. Now, the dumbbells did present some sort of a challenge but it wasn't like you were asking people to deadlift, you know, 250 pounds or 400 pounds or something like that. Right. So from a, a heavy perspective, that's all relative. So if I know that the ultimate goal of that workout is one to elicit a more endurance or cardio-esque response from each individual person, then that's what I'm going to coach them on. The weights, the weights are kind of there for you coaches, or you in particular, the head coaches, programming them to signify, okay, 
I remember I programmed this day to be heavy. So when Josh is here or Allie's here and Natalie's here or Melissa's here, I know individually because you know each of these people what their quote unquote heavy weight is going to be relative to them. And so that's really, I think, the, the distinction that needs to happen. But in terms of should we change it, does it, you know, do we call this our ex or not our ex? I don't really think that it matters because if you're doing what your coach told you to do, guess what? You're doing the prescription. Right. And, and I think that there does need to be a distinction between what we might call training and testing. So uh, last Thursday, we had a, like a benchmark workout that is set 21, 15, 9, thruster at this weight and pull up. So when we do tests like this, we are looking from a overall like meta, you know, per macro perspective, mm -hmm. you as head coach, me as owner, we want to kind of have a barometer for everybody, like a level playing field to see, okay, where is it that we can have the, the greatest positive adaptation for the group as a whole? Is it with a strength movement? Is it with a mobility movement, putting people in the front rack? Is it leg endurance? Am I noticing that people are not able to go through big sets of movements? Is it with upper body pulling movements? And so it's not so much that we want to compare it from a competitive standpoint. What a testing scenario does is it really sets a level playing field to say, okay, where, what's the low hanging fruit that we can then inject into this next phase of general group fitness to bring everybody up? Because the saying goes, the rising tide raises all boats. So if I know that overwhelmingly we need to improve in this area, great, then we can focus more on this area to kind of raise everybody's level of health and fitness up. Right. Now, from a, just a regular training day perspective, I don't care how I compare it to anybody. I'm here for myself, and I care about, am I just 1% better? Do I feel 1% better today than I did yesterday? That's what matters most. And I think that this is probably, like fundamentally for me, been maybe the biggest issue with the whole RX thing is because it does immediately, because we've all seen it happen, cause people to compare themselves to one another. Yet, if you go back to day one when you sat in this chair, it was never about the people who were next to you. It was about, I'm here for me. Right. And this is kind of the culmination of all that. So in terms of like, how is my thinking evolved on this? If you're doing what your coach told you, you're being coached, that's your prescription. Do you have anything to say to those people that, we'll, we'll call them leaderboard watchers? So those like, and I, and I fall under that category, is like if I'm, if I'm working out at 5.30 or 9 a.m. and then we have two or three other classes throughout the day, you best believe at 10.05 or at 6.05 or at 8.05 when the classes finish up, like I wanna, I wanna see how people did. Um, for me, I've, I, it used to be an issue for me, you probably remember there was a time, yeah. a long period of time where I stopped putting my scores in Wattify, even for benchmarks, because I, I didn't want to risk seeing my name in the number two spot. Like, I, it, that, that was a complex that I had with myself. Now I'm at the point where like, I don't know if you saw the leaderboard yesterday with that long endurance workout. I modified the heck out of that thing. There, I did not do any of it RX and still put my score in. So do you have anything to say to those that like to watch the leaderboard and like to look at people's scores and one, compare themselves, or two, just like to look at it? I would say, well, I've actually written several blogs about this because I do recognize that it is a reality of having a leaderboard. So you can go back and search for, I think actually if you search on our website just for leaderboard, you can see that. But I would just sit back and ask, you know, what is the feeling that you get when you do look at the leaderboard? And if it's not one, that is positive and has a, a, a big sense of like joy and puts a smile on your face. If it's something that, well, I don't think that so-and-so really did that, or if it's, well, now I feel worse because I was in number one position, but now I'm in number two, maybe 
it's not the best thing for you to be doing that. So I, I think that it, it does take a bit of self-awareness to process and internalize the feelings that you're having when you do go and look at the leaderboard. Now, where could it be beneficial? Because there is benefit to having that. I do love coming in and working out with the group at 9 a.m. when I do because Number one, I like to just be with my people. That's a huge motivator for me is I just like to be around these people. But I also know that, you know, if Bart shows up or Tabrez shows up or Justin shows up, that we're all kind of within about the same capabilities. So I, I can kind of use figures that I see on the leaderboard to kind of help me understand where not not where I belong in relation to them but like things that I can do because of where I know I stand you know amongst that group of people I don't know if that makes the most sense no that, that makes but like, sense it's not that oh you know Justin did this workout in seven minutes so I want to do it in six and a half it's got nothing to do with that what it means is like okay I should be somewhere in the neighborhood of seven minutes because Justin and I have worked out next to one another for like seven or eight years now, and I know that our capabilities are pretty similar. And guess what? I'm not here to win any gold medals. I'm here just to have fun, train, and make sure that I can do it for the next 50 years of my life. Yeah. And, and just staying within that and understanding I'm there to do what my coach is prescribing is the best for me, then guess what? That's, that's what I'm concerned about. I... Uh... Last couple of notes I have on this this topic is with a workout like today we already talked about it just so I don't go over the whole workout again it was a lot of double unders and a lot of overhead squats so compared to the endurance day we had yesterday today we, we call very high skill so on these high skill days like on days where you come in and we got muscle ups and double unders and overhead squats and dumbbell snatches and all these things that are high skills, aside from maybe the dumbbell snatch, there's going to be, quote, scaling that's happening. There's going to be modifications, which I like using that word a little bit more, modifications that are going to be made. And so you have days where, like, and you can even see it in days like today, especially this morning, it's like we had a class of, like, nine people at the 5.30 a.m. class, and a lot of them, a majority of them, finished this workout under the eight-minute cap, which is what you want as the program. Right. right, and so you want to see people choose the right modifications that are going to get them to the finish line in this workout because that means one, they chose the right modifications, two, they got the point of the workout that they were kind of looking for, and three, they're not going to be defeated if they were to do like 100 double unders in the first set across eight minutes, right. And you still have people that are saying they had a pitiful performance or something after, after their after their workout today, and it's because I attribute it to that shiny blue button that is on the computer screen because they can't click that because they modified the double under amount or they did single unders or they went lower on the overhead squats or they did front squats instead of overhead squats because they ripped their hand on Monday or something like that. Um, and and as head coach like and coach of the class and programmer, like, you hate to see that because you don't want people to feel that way. Like, be proud of how much this you came in and accomplished today. Like, think, and, and sometimes this is nice for it, is like, see your calorie burn. Like, feel the soreness. Feel what you accomplished today. How, how could you call that pitiful? But at the end of the day, that kind of, that comes down to me. Is how can I, how can I portray that better so people understand? It's like, you, you know, on a, on a micro sense in a class, but then on a more grand scale is how, how can someone understand this? How can I make someone understand this a little bit better so they can see how much better they're getting by doing single letters in front squats instead of what's written on that board out there? Yeah, I mean, so I'll say this, and, and I should do this live just so everybody can uh, see it. So I, I will go in right now and let's see if I can do it quick enough. While I'm waiting for the computer to lower, I see Melissa Zabel 
Hello, Melissa. My nines motivate me. Natalie says me too. And Melissa must have agreed with something that I said, which is awesome. Yes. Uh, 100%, 100%. So it was great. I actually did see her comment roll in when I was on a, a, a ramble there in terms of, you know, the fact that, you know, RX and being there for yourself and things like that. So two, um, two things before you find that is I found the blog post. It's called the Wattify Lead Report. I think this has to do more with like rep shaving, but it's still applicable to the the Wattify Lead Report. Um, so I can link that in the show notes, um, or we can link it here in the live feed real quick so that people have it. And then so that's from 2016. So that's a four year old article that's still holding true. Yeah. And then something a little bit more recent, and if you would rather listen than read, I did a podcast episode on January 24th that was released. It was CFG episode, or Art of Coaching episode number 30, called Squashing a Stigma Behind Scaling. And so it basically talked about what RX is, how I view it, and I remember a tagline that I used when recording this episode was, RX is a guideline used to help people get a better workout. Get yeah. the workout that's specific to that. So I just wanted to throw those two resources out there. All right. So today I'm going to click into the Metcon, and it took me, I literally finished uh, by the skin of my teeth, seven minutes and 58 seconds. Oh. And I did do front squats. All right. So I'll type that into my notes so I know what I did, not anybody else, but for me. And it's because what you told me to do, so you prescribed it to me. So guess what? I clicked the blue button and I clicked save. Oh. And I did it RX. And if you have issue with it, listen to the last 25 minutes. <laughs> no. That's on Wattify, you just did that? Yeah, that's nice. on Wattify, so. Cool. cool. So, you guys all have my permission. If you do what your coach tells you, guess what? You did the prescription. And if you do something other than what your coach tells you? You didn't do the prescription, you're fired. <laughs> okay, 